Hey, hey, as promised, this is part two for understanding the eight capacities to love. And let me tell you, it started with such an intimate conversation between my husband, William, and me. And when we went out to dinner with another couple, um, the Kinneys. And so this is part two of an 11 part series. And the framework really provides like using the bodies of water to correlate the varying sizes to one's capacity and ability to give and receive love. And so, like I said, we um, William and I went out with the Kinneys to this exclusive rooftop um, restaurant in Philadelphia. Now, William and I had never heard of this restaurant because the hotel does not advertise. It was like the Ritz Carlton. And you know the Ritz Carlton, they don't need to advertise, right? So anyway, they have a rooftop hotel that is really exclusively for their guests. And it's one of those situations like, well, if you know, you know. And the Kinneys knew and they hipped William and I and then we knew, right? So anyway, <sighs> As we sat there with, this was the first time that we went out with the Kinneys. Now, we knew Dr. Kenny like years ago, but this was the first time that we as a couple went out with Dr. Kenny and his wife. And so as each course came and we dined, the conversation got deeper and deeper and deeper. And so... You know, and talking about how William and I, you know, built the first five years of my our business, which was like simultaneously building our marriage. We were newly married, newly building multiple business at a time. And most of us know you can't start too many new things at once. It's just too many changes for the human capacity to process. Well, here I go, like new city, new husband, left work as an employee, first time into entrepreneurship, never really built a business before, never been without a job and having to like catch what I eat, right? And then on top of doing it with my husband, I mean, it was just so many new things at one time. And so we were explaining that to the Kinneys. And so it was in that conversation with a capacity for love emerged. So I had talked um, about how William having the capacity of an ocean and me having the capacity of a lake. Even though I feel like I have the capacity of one of the American Great Lakes, it's still a lake nevertheless and is definitely not as limitless and boundless as the capacity of an ocean, which I feel like William has. And the very funny thing about it is that the conversation and the whole capacity had nothing to do with love initially. It was really about the capacity of how much you can get done in a 24-hour period for multiple days in a row. Because, you know, building businesses, we had our, our nonprofit organization, Opportunity Inc. We had the cleaning business. And of course, I wanted to do my own thing, you know, working with couples. For those of you who are familiar with the Authentic Love Experience, the Authentic Servantship Leader War Ceremony, the Heal Trauma Conference, like that's what some, those were my things. And I'm like, okay, we can help you build yours but I need to build mine, right? So we were juggling all of these things. So, I mean, literally, my body would shut down. Like, I would just stop talking and I would lay in the bed for three days. I got up to use the restroom and to get something to eat. Literally, it was so much going on and it was nonstop from the time we woke up to the time we went to bed and I was just like, this is a lot. And half the stuff I didn't even want to do. I wasn't interested in doing. But because I'm a help me, I'm a wife, I made an agreement that I would be in business with my husband. It was like, okay, let me do what I need to do. And all the times that I tried to quit and stop, William was like, you can't jump off the train in the, uh, and it's going 100 miles, 150 miles per hour. 
Like, you can't do that. Like, we're in the middle of it. You can't just hop off because you decide that this isn't something that you want to do. Like, you made a decision. We made a commitment. You know, we have offices. We have volunteers. We have contracts. We have this. We have that, honey. And so I had to own it. I had to take that radical acceptance. Be like, okay, you know what? I did say yes. Even though I didn't count up the cost. I didn't even know what cost to count up. It says, you know, the Bible, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about count up the cost. Excuse me, before you get started. I didn't even know what the cost was because you don't know what you don't know. And I had no idea what it was like to really build a business. Multiple businesses. And doing it with your husband that you just got married to. Go figure. <laughs> so for those who know what I'm talking about, like pray for me, okay? But anyway, so the whole capacity conversation had nothing to do with love. It was really about one's capacity of how much you can take, how much you can handle, how much you can accomplish. Like William is a risk taker. I'm a risk, ad, ad, you know, more leaning toward risk aversion. It was just like, this was a lot. And so I don't want you guys to be surprised if I talk about these capacities outside of the context of love. But once I did my research and I continued to talk about it and process it, especially with my business coach, Shayna, and then with other couples, it was like, you know what? This capacity to love and for love and to give and receive love is huge. And I think it will help dissolve problems within real intimate relationships. Because remember, we don't want to dissolve marriages and relationships. We want to dissolve the problems, right? And so I feel like using these bodies of water to help us understand our capacities, whether it's capacities to give and receive love or just capacities to be able to accomplish, you know, a certain amount in a 24 hour period, the capacity of what you can handle and what you can't handle, whatever the situation, let's use these eight bodies of water to help us understand our capacities as well as our intimate partners okay so now the first capacity is the raindrop now i'm going to talk about these i'm just going to mention them the next eight videos and articles that you can read on medium that i make sure i have the links in the description they're going to talk about each capacity in detail. But today, I'm just introducing the eight capacities and the eight bodies of water. And I hope even with this introduction to these bodies of water and the capacity levels that you will learn something and it will whet your appetite to come back to learn more. So the first one is raindrop, right? Just think about a raindrop is the smallest body of water. Just, a, you know, a drop of water. Like, think about that. We can compare it to a tear, a drop of water, a raindrop, right? And we decided to use raindrop because we're dealing with outside the natural elements, the natural water cycle. And so raindrop is the smallest body of water. And so the raindrop symbolizes the moment of a deep emotion, vulnerability, and empathy. Do you have the capacity to be deeply emotional, vulnerable, and empathetic? Oh, I cannot wait until we talk about it in more detail. Okay, so that's the raindrop. So then you have a puddle. Think about it. A puddle is like the next size, right? A puddle can come from, you know, rain. And a puddle can actually be different sizes depending on how that particular ground is shaped. If it's a deep hole, if it's on the surface, if it's a puddle amongst like a grass of water, right? Oh my gosh, the different levels in, on, on, in the ground, on the ground surface, I'm telling you, right? So a puddle is a small contained experience or situation and it can symbolize a minor challenge or obstacles that couples encounter in their relationship. So the question is, do you get stuck with the pedals, the puddles, excuse me? Do you get stuck with the puddles 
in your relationship and you can't move beyond minor challenges. You can't move beyond those minor obstacles. Think about sometimes some puddles, especially depending on what you have on, right? You may take that leap and you may jump over the puddle. Sometimes you are able to walk around the puddle. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm so sorry. Or sometimes you may have to actually walk through the puddle depending on what the situation is. So we're going to talk in detail more about the capacity of a puddle. And we're going to look at it from both sides. Is it good or is it bad, right? Because all relationships deal with puddles of water. And so the next body of water is a fountain. So we all know that fountains are man-made structures that hold water. And it represents like this source of inspiration, creativity, and joy. Do you have the capacity to love relative to a fountain? Do you bring inspiration, creativity, and joy to your intimate relationship? Ooh, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. I'm All right, so no stream, right? So a stream is a narrow um, with a low water volume, and, and it has like this swift flow over a relatively small area. I know that was a little choppy, but think about a stream, right? A stream is narrow, it has a low water volume, and it like has this swift flow, and the area is pretty small, right? So think about it. Someone who has the capacity to love with this stream um, reference, it, they have this continuous flow of ideas, opportunities and experiences do you bring that to your relationship and i know some of us are like well i have the capacity of a teardrop or a raindrop in some areas i have a capacity of a pond in other areas in other areas i could be a fountain in other areas i could be a stream and that is absolutely right but i want us to really talk about or really think about it like our natural selves not situations that may come up, but I'm talking about who you are at a natural state without variables. Are you a raindrop? Are you a puddle? Are you a fountain or are you a stream? Okay, so the next one is river. So a river is a narrow a long body of water with a flowing current that dictates its path and its shape, right? So river represents a significant journey or transformative experience within a relationship. Now, this could mean that you may have started out in the relationship with a capacity of a puddle, but after you and your partner stayed together, you loved one another, you got over the obstacles, you jumped over those hurdles, you dealt with challenges one at a time, you got stronger, your love grew deeper, you stayed together, the bond strengthened. Think about it, right? You guys went through something, you had a transformative experience. Now you're operating at this capacity of a river. So I think the river is the one body of water where there has been a change. You may have had a lesser capacity to give and receive love before, but once you stayed with that person and you love that person and your defense is down, you got over some of your trauma, you built the trust up, you understand that the person is probably not leaving, they're being honest, they love you, they're committed to you and all your stuff, right? <laughs> and you're committed to them and all their stuff, right? Hey, you may be at a state of the capacity of a river, but we're going to talk about that a little more. So now the next body of water is a lake. And remember, these bodies of water are getting larger in its size, its dense, the, 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 the living um, creatures that live in that body of water, right? So think about a lake. A lake is a still body of water that reflects its surroundings, representing a sense of calm and tranquility. Do you bring a sense 
of calmness and tranquility? Can you be this reflection to your partner that may like live in states of anxiety? They may have OCD. They may have some trauma. They may be, you know, easily inflamed, right? And I don't want to say all of these things from a negative perspective, but you know, there's all different types of personalities. They could be alphas. They could be type A's, whatever the situation is, or they could be sad and depressed, right? Whatever. Do you reflect this sense of calm and serenity in your relationship with your partner? Do you bring that? Is that your capacity? Okay, so that's the lake. <clears throat> the next body of water is sea. So a sea is a vast body of water that possesses boundless possibilities. You know that a sea right? And there's also bays, depending on where you live, but a bay is smaller than a sea because I'm from Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia. So we have the Chesapeake Bay, right? And so I'm familiar with the bay and the bay really, depending on where you are, like in Norfolk, you may actually be in the Chesapeake Bay. But if you go into Virginia Beach, then you're actually in the Atlantic Ocean, right? So depending on where you are, and um, adjacent to bodies of water, it could be a sea, it could be a bay, or it could be the actual ocean. But you know that when you think about a sea, it symbolizes one's capacity to seize opportunities, embrace adventures, and undergo personal growth. Are you that adventurous person? Like, oh my God, William, whew, he is like seizing every opportunity goes after he's very adventurous like I said he's a risk taker however he still I believe in my sight <laughs> he has the capacity of an ocean but do you have the capacity of a sea right in your relationship can you be adventurous can you seize every opportunity in your intimate relationship to grow to love to change right can you do that and then lastly, of course, we have the ocean. We know the ocean is the largest body of water. And we know that it is it has limitless potential and profound wisdom. Now think about it. I didn't even think like that an ocean could have profound wisdom. But think about the depths of the ocean what it holds, what can live in it, the people who travel upon it, the relationship that it has with the sunrises and the sunsets, the storms that come from it. For instance, like the tsunamis, the, the water sprouts, like the water tornadoes, right? Oh my God, the, the surges, the waves that people surf in. I mean, think about the profound wisdom that an ocean has. That's why I believe that even though William is adventurous and he sees opportunities, I really believe his capacity to give and receive love and just his capacity in general is the capacity of an ocean because of he has such limitless potential and he has like profound wisdom. And so, again, oh, I cannot wait until we go into each one at a deeper capacity, a deeper understanding. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video about the eight capacities to love and that you will stick around, okay? And that you will check out the next eight. I am really, really excited. And let me know, please put in the chat what you've learned thus far. And if you like to read, go on over to Medium. Check out my articles um, in Medium. I have the articles in the YouTube videos that are, um, you know, correlating and paralleling with one another. Okay. I still appreciate you. I'm also on threads. And, you know, some people have been telling me to jump off of X. I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. But right now, I'm building a great and wonderful community on threads. So if you're on threads, go over to threads and follow me at underscore 